Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Fortin, Deer and Moose Project Leader for the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. And in this presentation, I'm going to review some of the results of the 2021 deer hunting seasons, as well as the current status of deer in Vermont and the department's deer management goals. Hunting conditions were challenging in 2021. Warm weather and abundant mass crops caused deer to move less and to be more spread out on the landscape. Despite those challenges, hunters were able to harvest 15,858 deer last fall. This was down somewhat from 2020, but similar to other recent years and still pretty good when compared to the past 20 years. The total buck harvest was 9,133, uh, this was very similar to 2020 and again down somewhat from recent years, but again, still pretty good relative to the past 20 years. It's also worth noting here that a decline in the harvest was expected as we've been working to reduce deer numbers in parts of Vermont for several years. So when we look at the harvest during the different seasons, uh, the results are a little more variable. The archery harvest declined significantly from the record harvest of 2020, but was more in line with what we expected to see under the new archery hunting regulations. Um, it appears most archery hunters had less time to hunt last fall than they did in 2020. Um, and we think this is more of a normal level of effort and what we should probably expect to see going forward. Another interesting note, uh, that shows up in, in several of the seasons uh, is that the archery harvest declined or the antlerless harvest declined substantially more than the buck harvest, uh, suggesting hunters were avoiding harvesting antlerless deer. Youth hunters harvested 1,074 deer during the youth weekend. That was down slightly from 2020 and was the lowest youth weekend harvest uh, since it became a two-day season back in 2002. Uh, now, it's not clear at this point whether that is just a continuation of a longer-term decline in the youth weekend harvest, or if it is related to us moving the season uh, two weeks earlier when deer may be less active. And again, I'll note that the buck harvest during this season actually increased while the antlerless harvest decreased. And uh, concurrent with the youth hunting season, we held our second annual novice hunting season for new first time adult hunters. Those hunters harvested a total of 54 deer. Uh, that was down substantially from the 126 deer taken during the first novice season in 2020. Uh, but the number of eligible novice hunters was also down considerably. However, 500 hunters is still a lot more than we were initially expecting for this season based on uh, past adult participation in hunter education courses. Uh, so it's great that we're seeing a high level of interest in this new season. In the October antlerless only muzzleloader season, hunters took 869 deer. Uh, that was down considerably from 2020 despite a similar, similar number of antlerless permits in hunters' hands. Um, it represented only a 5% fill rate on the permits that had been sold at the time. Um, and while we don't expect high fill rates in a short season like this, uh, these results clearly indicate that many hunters did not attempt to fill their permit during this season. The December muzzleloader season, uh, when hunters took 2,369 deer, was also down from 2020 um, and down considerably from other recent years. Of course, it's important to keep in mind here that we added the October muzzleloader season in 2020, and a lot of hunters are choosing to fill their antlerless permit uh, during that earlier season. So they're, they're not filling that permit in December. And if we look at the combined muzzleloader harvest, including both the October and December seasons, uh, we see again that 2021 was down notably from 2020, uh, 
but also down from other recent years when similar numbers of antlerless permits were issued. So although hunting conditions were challenging, uh, this is notable because hunters had four additional days in October to fill their antlerless permit in 2020 and 21. Uh, and we expected this to result in a higher fill rate. Again, it is clear that hunters were avoiding harvesting antlerless deer uh, as the muzzleloader buck harvest was actually up slightly from 2020. And when we look at those antlerless permit fill rates over time, we can see that adding the new four day season in October has, so far at least, had little or no effect on those fill rates. They remain around 15% where they've been. Um, and these relatively low fill rates are why we need to issue 20,000 antlerless permits when we're only trying to kill 3,000 antlerless deer. Uh, now more permits does mean more opportunity for more hunters, but at a certain point, in order to meet our harvest objectives, we end up needing to issue more antlerless permits than we have muzzleloader hunters, which of course is problematic. Um, the October antlerless season was intended to address this issue by increasing fill rates. Uh, now it's early and we're gonna have to see what happens in the next couple of years, but so far uh, this is not what we expected or hoped would happen as a result of this a new season. Last, but certainly not least, uh, 7,039 bucks were taken during the regular November season. This was nearly identical to 2020. And although it is down a bit from the recent high a few years ago, it remained above 7,000 for the sixth consecutive year. Now we've only exceeded 7,000 one other time since 2002. Um, we are still trying to understand uh, what impacts the new hunting regulations may be having on this harvest. Uh, remember that for the past two years, hunters have been able to shoot spike antler bucks in about half of the state, um, but we've also had a one buck limit, which is causing some hunters to pass on bucks that they could legally harvest. So at this point, those unknown impacts kind of complicate making any direct comparisons of the buck harvest to prior years. Now, as we transition to reviewing the current status of deer in Vermont, I want to start with one of the most important things that happened in 2021. In September and October, we had our first outbreak of epizootic hemorrhagic disease, or EHD. Uh, EHD is a virus that is transmitted by a biting midge or noceum. Um, and although it is new for us, it is the most common viral disease of deer in North America. Uh, it occurs regularly in southern states, so some southern deer have developed immunity to it. But in northern areas, EHD outbreaks occur only sporadically and so deer have no immunity to the virus. As a result, most EHD infected deer in these areas will die. Um, typically outbreaks occur in the late summer and early fall, and they end when the first hard frosts kill the midges that are transmitting the virus. Now, we may have had a few individual cases of EHD in years past, but this was the first time we actually confirmed the disease through lab testing, and it's the first time we've had large numbers of deer die from it. Uh, so based on the deer we investigated and the reports we received or heard about secondhand, uh, it appears the outbreak was mostly limited to the towns of Castleton and West Haven in Rutland County, although there could have been a few individual cases in nearby towns. But in those two towns, uh, we estimate the virus might have killed as much as 25% of the local deer herd and probably with even higher mortality rates on some of the most heavily impacted properties. And it's also important to, to look at this in a broader context. Um, 
our EHD cases were just an extension of a much larger outbreak in the Hudson Valley in New York. Um, New York also had a, another separate EHD outbreak in Western New York and the St. Lawrence Valley. Um, now this outbreak in the Hudson Valley was a bit unusual uh, in that a similar outbreak occurred in that area in 2020. And as I mentioned earlier, typically in Northern areas, EHD outbreaks occur only sporadically, you know, maybe once every five or seven years. And even then, they don't necessarily occur in the exact same area. So, you know, again, we think most likely we won't see EHD in Vermont again for several years, um, but we will be watching for it. And as our climate warms and those midges that transmit the virus are able to survive winters further and further north, uh, EHD is going to be an increasingly common part of uh, our deer management world here in Vermont. Now, one of the other big news stories of 2021 was that deer are susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. Um, it is clear at this point that deer have repeatedly contracted the virus from humans. Um, basically, every common variant in humans has been found in deer. Um, it is not exactly clear how humans are transmitting the virus to deer. Um, now, there's no evidence that the virus causes any disease in deer, so this isn't really a concern for deer populations. Uh, instead, the concern here is that deer will provide a reservoir where the virus will be maintained outside of the human population and then could potentially be transmitted back to humans in a mutated form that could evade vaccines. Um, now, there was a, a very recent study out of Ontario, which may have actually documented that transmission from a deer back to a human. Um, but it is important to note here that there is no evidence that deer are playing an important role in the transmission of COVID. Most people aren't spending a lot of time in close contact with live deer. Um, but this is something to be aware of and something that wildlife agencies and public health officials will be monitoring going forward. Uh, now, we did collect samples from about 100 Vermont deer last fall. Uh, we'll be collecting another 500 to 1,000 samples this coming fall. Testing of those samples is being handled by USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. It's part of a larger national effort. Um, we do not have any results from that sampling last fall yet. However, uh, based on results from samples collected just over the border in Quebec, uh, we fully expect that some of our deer will have the virus or at least have antibodies to the virus from past exposure. Okay, uh, moving on to the current status of our deer population. I mentioned earlier that we've been working for several years to reduce deer numbers in some parts of Vermont uh, with the goal of bringing the population in balance with what our current habitat can support. Uh, and we've made good progress in that regard. Now, we don't have final winter severity numbers for this winter yet, but for the most part, winter appears to be pretty much over, um, and we can make an early prediction about where we think we'll be this coming fall. Um, and so with the exception of a few WMUs, mostly in the Champlain Valley, uh, we should be near our population objectives in most of the state and essentially looking to maintain deer numbers at their current level. Now, deer population or deer density objectives for each wildlife management unit were established in the 2020 to 2030 Big Game Management Plan. These are the targets that we base our annual harvest recommendations on, uh, but these are just our biologists' best estimate based on all available information of how many deer each area can support. In that Big Game Plan, we also established targets for health measures like body weight, antler size, and birth rate. Uh, now those measures tell us with more certainty if a deer herd is actually in balance with its habitat or not, regardless of what the density is. Um, because ultimately our overarching goal is to have a healthy and sustainable deer herd. 
And so the, the data we have on the health of our deer here in Vermont tells us we haven't been meeting that objective in many areas. Um, so this chart shows yearly antler beam diameters over time. Uh, this is one of the most commonly used measures of deer herd health. Uh, and we can see that we've had a slow, steady decline over the past 30 years. And this tells us that we've had more deer than the habitat can support, at least in many areas. Now, we may be beginning to see uh, the first signs of improvement in the last couple of years, um, which is what we would expect and hope to see as a result of the population reductions, um, but it's too early to know for sure. Uh, what's also interesting here is that although deer numbers have fluctuated up and down some, the overall population size hasn't really changed substantially over the past 30 years. Instead, what we believe is the primary driver of this decline is not so much that we have more deer than we used to, but instead that the quality of our deer habitat has declined. And the primary reason habitat quality has declined is because our forests are getting older. Uh, today, middle-aged mature forests, like the photo on the right here, dominate most of the Vermont landscape with very limited amounts of young forest or true old, old growth forest. Um, wildlife in Vermont require a diversity of forest conditions. Uh, and young forest in particular, like the photo on the left here, provides essential food and cover for many species of wildlife, including deer. Um, so it's really the amount of this young forest habitat that has a significant influence on how many deer an area can support. And truly, even old forests, what, what again, what some people would call old growth forests, are more complex and provide more food and cover in the understory than those even aged mature forests that dominate Vermont today. So in conclusion, if you'd like to see more deer in your area, work to improve the habitat and advocate for others to do the same. But in the meantime, let's work to keep our deer healthy and keep them in balance with the habitat we've got. For more information on the 2021 deer harvest and deer management in Vermont, visit vtfishandwildlife.com.